Hey folks, welcome to Wolfpin's Gimmick Den. Today we'll be covering the tutorial for the game It's a Wonderful World, designed by Frederick uh, Garrard and artwork by Anthony Wolf, published by Le Bois de Jour and Ori Games. Now the version that I have here is the heritage version, so there's a, a bunch of extra stuff that came with it, including components. Uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll, the rules that we will cover will basically apply to any version of the game that you may have. So rest assured, whatever version you may be working with, uh, the rules will cover you for that one. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll basically do a uh, setup with examples and rules uh, for a game that will cover three, four, and five player counts. Uh, and at the very end of the video, I will also cover the uh, quick minor rule change that applies if you're playing a two-player game. The game also plays solo. Uh, but I will now be covering the tutorial for the uh, solo mode. I'll leave that for you to discover on your own. Uh, but even with the solo mode, uh, the mechanics will be largely similar. So this video would still be helpful for you if you want to check it out. So with that said, let's crack into it. We'll start by looking at the setup and we'll talk about what we're trying to accomplish in this game as well as what the turn structure and the rules look like. So in It's a Wonderful World, basically you're looking to have the most prosperous nation for yourself. And the way that you will do that is by drafting cards, uh, which will allow you to uh, construct them to gain points as well as resources. And you can also recycle the cards to gain immediate resources if you require that in a pinch. The game will be played over four rounds. And at the end of the four rounds, you will tally up the total points that you've accumulated over the course of the game itself. And whoever has the most points wins. So as I mentioned in that overview, it is a drafting game and that is a key mechanic within the game itself. Uh, so let's start by looking at the setup. So over here, we have the game board setup. Now the game board is basically uh, uh, split up into two different components. Just put them together uh, so that they make an arrow shape like so going from left to right. Uh, the game is played over four rounds, as I've mentioned, and there is a round marker up top over here. So you will see the one, two, three, and four up top, and you get the round uh, marker token uh, as well. One side is green and the other side is purple. You will put it with the corresponding color side up for that particular round. So round one is green. We'll have it green side up. What that basically tells us is that the drafting for this particular round is going to take place in a clockwise direction. When you move on to round two, you will flip it over and put it this side up, that tells you that drafting for round two is gonna be in a counterclockwise position. And then you will keep alternating uh, for rounds three and four as well. So for round one, we'll set it up uh, over here like so. Next, you will take uh, these five different resource uh, components or cubes that come in the game and you will put it uh, on their matching slots. Uh, so it's not random, it has to go to their matching slot. If you look at these symbols slash colors at the very bottom of these locations, they will tell you what has to go where. So you need to make sure that you put the matching resources on those particular slots going from gray all the way over to blue over there. Next, you will have these three cardboard uh, pieces put out right underneath the board on their uh, interlocking slots over there. Uh, this is sort of like a wild resource in the game. So this will be uh, separate from all of these and this will go over here. Uh, these resources, these are basically character tokens. You will put the character tokens that come in the game on their matching slots over here. I've not used all the tokens for ease because there's a whole bunch of them, but you need, you, know, you want to put out as many as you can on these two particular slots. Next up, the game comes with these different nation cards. Uh, you will take the different nation cards and you can either select between the different players or you can randomly give out one to each of them. A uh, couple of things you want to keep in mind when you're looking at this one is uh, you want to make sure that all the players are playing with the same side up. So this is a double sided card uh, and this is side A. This is side B, so you want to make sure that everybody's look, playing with the same side up, uh, regardless of the nation card that they have. And then secondly, if you're playing your first game or one of your first few games, the rulebook recommends that you play with side A up because it's a, a little bit of a uh, helps for you with that introduction to the game feel, as it were. So for the purposes of the tutorial, we're going to keep it side A up, but we'll have a look at side B at the very end. Uh, if you're comfortable with this, you should be covered for that as well. So this is going to be in front of you in your play area. Uh, next up, you will take all the different cards that come in the game. Uh, now, I have it in two separate piles because these are sleeved and they make one massive stack that keeps on falling. Uh, but it is supposed to be one draw pile. You can do one or two, whatever, sort of like uh, uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, 
thoroughly shuffle them up uh, and make your draw pile over here uh, on the left hand side of the board. The right hand side of the board that's not over there remains empty for now. That is basically where the discarded cards will go. So that will start accumulating cards face up over the course of the game itself. Uh, once you're done with this, uh, keep the rule book off to the side. So we'll come back to this at the very end. Uh, these are the remaining nation cards. The ones that you don't use go off to the side. So we're putting them off uh, screen over here. And with that said, uh, ignore these for now. Uh, but you're pretty much done with the main setup for the game itself. Uh, so in this game, as I said, it's played over four rounds, and each of those rounds takes place in three different phases. And you will complete each phase uh, uh, to its entirety before moving on to the next phase. Do all the three phases to the end, the round ends, the marker moves to the next one, and then you will repeat the three phases again, and you will complete those four times. So the three phases basically are you have the drafting phase, you have the planning phase, and you have the production phase. Let's start with the drafting phase. So for the draft phase, you will take cards from here and you will uh, randomly start distributing it around the table. Each player will get seven cards uh, in a three player, four player and a five player game. Uh, and which is sort of like the example of the cards that we had separately put out over here. So in this example, we're saying that we're playing a three player game. Uh, we have randomly shuffled and distributed the cards. Each player has gotten seven cards uh, that form their hand. So let's pretend these are for my uh, opponents. So we'll move these to the side. And we're saying that this is the hand that we got. So once everybody's been given out the seven cards, everybody will look at the seven cards that they have been dealt. Uh, you will choose to keep one in your draft area and you will pass the rest either in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction based on what that mark is telling you around the table. Uh, so let's say, for example, maybe, you know, in this phase, we're looking at this one and we figured, hey, let's start off with an easy one. Maybe we want to do this. Uh, so we're going to put it face down in our draft area and we'll pass the rest in a clockwise direction because we're in round one onto the next player. The others will basically keep uh, one card for themselves and they will pass the rest on to us. Now, before we do anything with this, we are meant to flip this over. So everybody around the table will see which card has been drafted by which of the different players. Uh, so you wanna make sure that that is done. Uh, and as, uh, once you flip that over, uh, you now start looking at the remaining cards that you've just been sh uh, that have just been shared with you. So in this case, we've got six cards uh, in our hands. We'll again choose to keep one, put it in our draft area face down. So maybe uh, we want to keep a card with a long-term strategy in mind. So maybe this is a little trickier. So let's say we said we want to uh, create this one. We're going to put it face down over here. Again, pass the rest on to the left. Uh, and by this point, our uh, other player on the other side have kept one of the cards and they've passed the remaining on to us at that stage. Uh, and then, of course, before we do the same thing again, we flip the card over. Uh, so this will continue going around the table until you've completed drafting seven cards. Uh, so some of the cards that you started off with will might come back to you. Uh, others obviously wouldn't because they would have been selected. But you're drafting seven cards around the table at that point. Uh, so at the end of the phase, we're gonna say that, you know, maybe these are the cards that we had selected. Uh, so we have three, four, five, six, seven. So let's say, for example, these were the seven cards uh, that we had drafted, and these are all in our draft area. I'll quickly call out that the game recommends organizing your play area in terms of your empire card over here. Uh, cards that you've constructed should go over here. This is your draft area, and this is the area for the cards in the construction. So we will follow that template for the purpose of the tutorial, but uh, feel free to rearrange as you wish, but you do want to make sure that these are distinct areas in front of you, because that will really help you with uh, uh, ease of gameplay. So now that we have these seven cards drafted, the draft phase is over. We now move on to the planning phase. In the planning phase, you will need to make decisions uh, in terms of what you want to do with these cards. And you can do two things with uh, uh, each of these cards. Well, one of two things uh, with each of these cards. You can either start construction on them or you can recycle them for immediate benefit. So let's start by looking at these cards so that we better understand what basically that means. Uh, so over here in this card, this basically tells you the name of the card itself. So that's great. This number tells you how many of these, uh, this the copy of this card you have in the deck itself. So uh, a lot of these cards are repeated over the deck. So this tells you that there are seven uh, wind turbines uh, in the main bo game box itself. These are the resource cubes needed to complete construction on this card. So this requires two gray cubes from right over there. 
this over here tells you that if I wanted to recycle this card, so I said, I don't want to start construction, I want to recycle it. This is the immediate benefit that I will get. So I will gain one black cube from right over there. And uh, this tells you sort of like the type of card that it is. So this will often interact with points conditions and so on. So you want to make a note of this as well. Uh, and this is once this card has been constructed, it will go on top of your empire card like this. And we'll talk about the production phase later on, but it will keep uh, during every production phase, it will give you the resource or the benefit that's printed over here. So keep that in mind. So that's roughly the anatomy of the card. Now there's one thing that's missing from this one. And let's see if I can find one uh, that provides it. And this is, might be a good example. So you will see that there's another additional symbol in this card, which this one was missing. And what this basically tells you is, this is the construction benefit. So once you've constructed the card, you will immediately get this benefit. So in this case, you will get one of these uh, red character tokens over there and you will keep it uh, in front of you. So that's the construction benefit. With that said, you hopefully you've now understood the anatomy of this card. So we're gonna say that we made some decisions with the cards that we drafted. So maybe uh, we decided that we're gonna construct this one. Uh, and then we said that maybe we wanted to discard this one uh, for, or recycle this one rather uh, for the cube. So let's look at how that works. So we might do something like this. Uh, so this is discarded. We're supposed to get one of the black cubes. You will take a black cube. Uh, but now you make, need to make a decision in terms of what happens with this because it is it is a critical point. Uh, so you can do one of two things. Either this can go on a card on your construction area that requires one of those cubes. So in this case, we saw that the military base uh, requires uh, three gray cubes and one black cubes. And this is in my construction area. So I can take this black cube and I can put this down on the slot where a black cube is required and now I've started contributing towards the construction cost of that card. So that's one of the things that I can do. Now, maybe I don't have a card up here that requires any black cubes, in which case I can put this on top of my empire card as well. But it's important to know that cubes that go on your empire card cannot be reused later on for other cards over here. The only thing they will do once they go over here is as soon as you've accumulated five of them, you will be able to turn those five in for one of these uh, red cubes, also known as crystalliums in the game. Uh, the red cubes serve one of two purposes. Some cards specifically require a crystallium, so obviously you use it at that point uh, in that construction cost. Uh, also, crystalliums can be used as a wild in the game as well. So anytime you need to pay a certain resource cost and in a pinch you don't have it, uh, you can use this to complete the construction as well uh, for that particular resource. So you can either put it on a card that's under construction or you can just put it on your empire card. And as a reminder, your empire card basically tells you that, hey, you can convert uh, any five cubes. They don't have to be five of the same type. It can be any five onto a crystallium. So you're gonna make those decisions and then maybe we chose at the end of the uh, planning phase that we want to complete construction on these cards. And then these cards, maybe we just discarded and picked up uh, the recycle uh, benefit uh, over here, like so. So these basically go onto the discard pile. Uh, and maybe we uh, were able to obtain some of these cubes through the recycling process, uh, which are gonna help us uh, do over the construction of the cards itself. So let's pretend that this is what we did and this is the end result that we have over here. So that's great. Uh, now this is a phase, the planning phase, uh, that can be done simultaneously. If you're playing your first game or you have a lot of new players around the table, it might be recommended that you do it in turn order so that everybody follows along with everybody else. Uh, but if everybody's comfortable, uh, it is possible to do this simultaneously just to make sure that you speed up the game as well. So that's the end of the second phase, which is the planning phase. Now you'll move on to the third phase, which is the production phase. In the production phase, you will basically start by going through a few different steps. You will look at all the different resources you're producing uh, with your nation card and uh, with the constructed cards that you have up top over here. And you will start calling those out, going in sequence left to right. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's now pretend that maybe we had constructed uh, some of these cards. So let's bring some of these back. So maybe. Uh, we can pretend that we had constructed this one and maybe we can pretend that we had constructed this one. So we have one empire card and two of these cards that are constructed. So what's going to happen? Let's zoom in and see what these guys do. Uh, so what these basically do is they tell you the resources that they will give you during the production phase itself. So the, this empire card is going to give you three gray cubes and one yellow cube. 
this card is going to give you two of the green cubes. This card is going to give you one black cube. And you're going to get those during the production phase. But you're not getting those just yet. All you're doing is you're counting up how many of each you're going to get. And then starting from left to right, uh, everybody will call out how many of these they are producing in this round. So we're going to produce three gray cubes. So we're going to say we're going to produce three of these. Maybe another uh, one of my players, uh, another one of the players said, hey, we're going to produce two of these. And somebody else said, we're going to produce none of these. Uh, so three is then the most uh, production for that one. And the reason why that is important is whoever is producing most of each one of these going in sequence left to right, will gain the benefit that's printed up top over here. And these are character tiles. So in this case, as you can see, whoever produces the most will get one of these blue character tiles. So if this was me with my production of three of these, I will take one of these and put it over here like so. Uh, and then we will basically do the same thing with this one. So I'm producing one, maybe somebody else is producing two and then somebody else is producing four. So whoever's producing four uh, will basically gain one red character token uh, so they'll pick it up and they will keep it in front of them and we'll keep going left to right for resolving each of these. These two work the same way. The only difference with this one is this gives you a choice between blue and red. So whoever's producing the most uh, chooses which one they want. Uh, and so you'll take either one and you move along with it. Uh, these character tokens can be banked. So you can just you know keep it to the side and you can use it on a later turn when you do need it. Uh, so... In this, uh, at the first step of the production phase, you're basically calling out how many of each of these you're producing, and whoever produces the most will pick up that corresponding benefit. Then you actually go into the production itself. So uh, we had said that we're producing three of these, so we, you know, we'll pick up uh, three of these. We had said that we're producing two greens, so we're going to pick up two greens, and we had said we're producing one yellow, so let's pick up a yellow. Uh, and one black. So let's pick up a black. Uh, now, as soon as we pick this up, so if you remember during the recycling phase, you had to put down uh, the cubes immediately on a card contributing towards its construction or put it uh, on your nation card or empire card. Same philosophy applies here during production as well. So with each of these, they need to be allocated either on one of these cards contributing towards the construction or they need to come here. So we might look at these and say, hey, uh, we could actually complete this card with the two green cubes over here so maybe we want to put those two over there uh, and then maybe these two gray cubes can help me out over here because this required three it did so we're going to do that uh, and this requires one black cube and we were able to get one black so we're doing the black one over there uh, and then we have these two cubes which we cannot put in any of these cards so these now come on my empire on nation card over here like so once you've allocated the resources, uh, you, you may have obviously completed some of the cards. So you then need to start resolving that. So in this case, we've completed these cards. These now go back and this card will go on top over here. Uh, and then when we do the production phase for the next round, uh, I, this will give me additional benefit, which is basically two black cubes and one yellow cube at that point. This I've completed the production on as well. So these will now go back to their respective containers as well. Uh, and this goes over here. This will also give me benefit during the next production phase. But if you remember, we had said uh, this one has a construction bonus. So we will immediately pick up one of these red tokens and put it in front of us. And this now goes uh, with the rest of the completed card stack over here. And this is still gonna remain and we'll have a chance to complete this in subsequent rounds. Uh, that basically would be the end of the round. And then obviously you, you know, flip this over round two you start another draft phase deal out seven cards to everybody except this time uh, cards are going to be drafted counterclockwise as opposed to clockwise uh, and then you will do that uh, for the same thing for round three and round four uh, till everybody completes the whole four rounds uh, the one thing that i'll quickly call out uh, just to make sure that everybody is aware is uh, for the cards that you have in construction, now you can choose at any point to say, hey, I'm not going to continue construction on this one because either this no longer meets my objectives or uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to complete this. So you can always sort of like, you know, do the same recycle action with a card that is under construction. Uh, but this is a less optimal move because if any cubes that you have on it will go back to the container, they do not come back to you. Uh, and then you only get the recycle benefit uh, over here. So that would be one blue cube. And that's pretty much it. Uh, with that said, once you're done with uh, the full four rounds, the game will end and you'll now start tallying up your points and see who is the winner. You can use the score sheet that comes with the game as well. It's a, a pretty nifty and a, a helpful way of sort of like uh, tabulating your scores. Uh, so let's maybe go through a quick example of how that might work as well. So uh, 
let's start by looking at the cards uh, and see where you might be able to find victory points printed on them. Now, uh, some of these cards will have these numbers on the left hand side, and these are just worth straight up points. So in this case, if you've constructed uh, this card, this card is going to give you two points straight up at the end of the game. So that's easy enough. Uh, other cards will give you points based on conditions you would have to meet. So in this case, this tells you, and this is your nation card, uh, and you might have noticed that you know you get these during the production bonus, but we had not talked about this one. This is for end game scoring. So this tells you you would gain one point for each of the blue character tokens that you have. Uh, so that's going to be this one. So you would get for each one of these that you have, these are going to score you points at the end of the game as well. So to add up your points, uh, you're basically going to look at uh, the intrinsic value of the card, which is the value that we saw at the bottom left. Uh, you will take all the different type of cards that you get in the game uh, and whatever conditions or points that you would get from those, uh, such as the one point uh, for each of those character tokens or one point for each particular type of card uh, constructed. Uh, and you would add up those. Let's maybe look at a few examples just so that you guys get a good sense. So this one gives you another point for each one of the blue character tokens. Uh, this gives you straight up two points. Uh, do we have more? Not in here. Uh, straight up one point. Let's see if we can find a few more examples. Uh, so this tells you that you will get three points for each of this science character cards, uh, sorry, science cards that are uh, built. So this is a science card itself. So this by itself will give you three points, but for every other card of this type that you've got completed construction on, uh, will also score you three points at the end of the game. One point for each red token, two point for each of these different kind of cards. You get the rough gist of sort of like how this works hopefully now. So. Uh, you're adding up the intrinsic value of the points, which is just the points listed on the card. You're adding up the points for, you know, uh, points based on certain conditions. You're adding those up for the different types as well. Uh, and then lastly, each one of these character tokens that you have left over uh, is also worth one point. So you're just going to add up uh, one point for each of these. So if you have two of these left over, these are worth two points by themselves as well. Uh, so you're going to add those up over here, add them up. And then obviously, whoever has the most points is the winner. Uh, the one uh, minor item I just quickly forgotten to call out is I mentioned that how this was a wild uh, and can be used in lieu of any one of these. I forgot to mention that uh, this cannot be used instead of these two. So I just want to make sure that I call that out so that uh, there is no confusion on that one. Otherwise, with that said, that pretty much is the rules for It's a Wonderful World. Uh, hopefully, uh, with the examples uh, and the sample turns that we went through, this gives you a uh, a good sense of how the game works with the rules and whatnot. Uh, and you're ready to go and play sort of like, you know, your games at three, four, five play counts as well. Uh, I will quickly call out the difference between uh, those and the two player version. Uh, and it's a very minor difference that you can easily adjust for. Basically, instead of drafting uh, and instead of giving out seven cards to each of the players because you're playing with a two player game, you will give out 10 cards to each player. But you're not drafting all of the 10 cards. Uh, the draft will work pretty much the same way. But once you've drafted your seventh card, you will discard the three remaining over there. So you're still drafting seven cards, but because each player starts off with 10, you get a few more choices to choose from uh, during the drafting phase. And that's the only difference. The rest of the game works pretty much the same way. Uh, if you're playing solo, uh, there are uh, campaign scenarios uh, in the box, at least in the version that I have, uh, but you can play this game solo as well. Uh, and most of the mechanics are going to be pretty much the same as this with some minor differences. I'm not going to be going through those, uh, but hopefully with this video covered, uh, you can quickly crack into this and uh, hopefully catch up on that pretty quickly yourself. So that's pretty much it. That's the tutorial for It's a Wonderful World. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions on the video, feel free to leave them down below uh, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And in the meanwhile, uh, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.